G'day guys, M Tim Tam here. Welcome back to another batch group of tutorials for Octane Render version 3. Version 3 was recently given out to the public. It introduces a whole swag of new features such as volumetric rendering. This will require a fair bit of tutorials to go through. Deep image rendering, customizable panels, Photoshop compositing, texture baking, interactive region rendering changes, visible environments, raw and filter render passes, animated image textures, a new signing out option which makes it a whole lot more easier, as well as offline license mode. On top of all these uh, introduction and feature overview, I'll also be going through the customizable panels. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's start out with the new signing in and signing out methods. Previously in Octane Render, you would have to manually deactivate your license uh, through the website in order to use it from different computer to computer. However, in this version, you no longer have to use that anymore. The moment you start Octane version 3 and close it, it will automatically close that license for you on that computer. So if I wanted to uh, go on this session and then going on my new computer, all I have to do is close Octane version 3, start up my new computer, load up Octane version 3 in that um, computer, and it will work without any hassle. However, if your computer were to crash or if power were to turn off uh, at your household and uh, it's stuffed up, there is still a fail slave on the website, which is the normal old manual way, in order to deactivate it. On top of this new signing in and signing out method, uh, there's also a new way to put your password, username, and password. In the old version, you would have to put in the long numbers and letters in order to activate it. In this version, however, you have to all you have to do is put in your OTO login. So in my case, it's Radiant along with its associated secret password. This is to make the signing in method a lot more uh, standard a lot more easier, a lot more intuitive, and it will get rid of a lot more hassles if you're in a feature film setting and pipeline. Uh, in terms of the cooldown on how long it will work, it should be instantaneous. There's no waiting period for it, no 24 hours, no half an hour. It should automatically work. So let's start with the customizable panels. Otto has completely overhauled its panels and its customization. Uh, when you first op open up Octane version 3, in each panel you will see a checkbox in the corner which illuminates yellow. Uh, first, let's do the obvious. Uh, click and drag the checkboxes and as you can see, you can see these yellow lines happening around in various edges and corners. Um, if you were to release the mouse click, you can move these panels in any way you want. Um, in order to reset it, all you have to do is go to the Windows and Reset Workspace. On top of clicking and dragging, if you right click onto it, you will get a list of options. Maximum, Minimum, Horizontal Split, Vertical Split, Undock, Customizable Toolbar and Close Panel. Closing Panel being a lot more helpful for this tutorial since I'll be showing you the best way to have your workspace. However, before we do that, let's go through a few more options. In the windows, you can save your workspace, you can load your workspace, you can save it as default. You can also create different uh, panels by clicking the create whatever panel you want. Obviously, you can't click the ones that are already shown up. If you want to keep the panels here and you want to split it, all you have to do is right click over, split vertical, and split horizontal. It reminds me a lot like Blender. And some of them you can't do that, unfortunately. Obviously, you can't do it in the viewport. Uh, you can also undock the selected panel and do it somewhere else if you don't want to go through the hassle of creating it. And you can also customize your toolbar on what options you want. I definitely 
got rid of a whole bunch of junk in the uh, toolbar here in the viewport. I'm going to rearrange what I would work best. Um, I'm using dual monitors at the moment, however on a single monitor this is how I would do it. First and foremost I want the graph editor to be the most dominant along with the viewport. So I would put my node graph editor on the very bottom because that's where I'll be looking at the most. I'll be putting, I'll be splitting this, oh, I've got it right, I always mess those two up. I'll be putting this here. Close it. And I'll be putting the options on the side here. Because I rarely use the scan outline unless I'm using the live database. And the focus is within the node editor and the viewport is smack bang in the middle because that's where I'll be mostly be looking at. Um, if I'm using the dual monitors I would have this whole entire screen would be the viewport and these three panels will be on the other monitor with the node editor taking the most amount of space up. Um, since I'll be, since I like this um, workflow and I might be changing it depending on the speed I want to work at, go to Windows, save as default layout. And if I click new again, yeah if I click new it should work. So that's the customizable panels. I'm sure you have your own work method and workplace to do it. This is going to be my preferred one and that I'll be working with in this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and the next one will be the new interactive region rendering. See ya.